Looking at these two goes, can you see what went wrong in one of these attempts? <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about the scorpion technique. It's a widely useful and yet rarely taught technique in climbing that can be helpful anytime you need to control or reduce a swing, whether from dynoing or a foot cut. The cool thing about this is that it has such a characteristic body position that it's really easy to identify and practice. And with some of the drills that we'll give you here, it's easy to feel out for climbers of most levels. And in as few as a couple of days of practice, you can see it really make a difference into how you perform on the wall. If you don't do this and you instead either share the swing sort of equally through your body or tuck up into this cannonball position, it brings your sort of button hips out first from the wall which then pulls your back and shoulders and it ends up pulling your forearms out to get into almost as slopey a position as possible on the handholds, almost always ripping you off the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so see how just by kind of pulling my feet up in front of me instead of flaring out behind, it immediately rolled my arms out and I got tossed. Though the scorpion technique is identified by the motion of your lower body, this movement is predominantly about scapular control and tempo. And so what you're really sort of focused on is how you engage your back to stay tight to the wall. And the way that your legs fly out behind is somewhat coincidental. Because of this, it can carry over very nicely to many other aspects of climbing and basically any dynamic motion. Sometimes you're keeping really tight and you're engaged and you have to bring a high foot. Now when I move my other foot, it's still a scorpion. As soon as this kind of relaxes, suddenly you don't have good force transfer from your hands to your body to your feet. So this motion, even though we're now using it to mitigate swing, is exactly what lets you drive into feet and kind of maintain tension. This is one of those techniques that once you see it and kind of start getting a little bit of practice with it, you realize that it shows up in one way or another all throughout climbing. <laughs> and you kind of start to wonder how you weren't exposed to it earlier or how, uh, how you ever climbed without it. So how do you learn this technique? We're basically trying to use the fingerboard to expose you to the position. Then once you have a sense of what that feels like and what your body is trying and wanting to do, you're going to then move over to the climbing wall, which is a somewhat more complicated environment, and try to make yourself do the same thing on purpose. To make this even more convenient, we've put all of these drills into the Crimped app, who is the sponsor of this video. If you don't know, Crimped is an app made for climbers that contains all kinds of workouts and training advice. And there are even more great features with Crimped Plus, which lets you customize your training plan, access pre-built skill templates, and schedule your training more effectively. If you're on the fence about trying Crimped Plus, there's no better time than right now because you can enter to win free Crimped Plus for life just by downloading the app and logging this routine. So the first place to start with this is to find some good flat edges that you can hang from comfortably and easily, but aren't so in cut that you can really dig behind them to control your swing. You're gonna to wanna to create a fairly large swing from a pretty straight arm position, and then experiment with pulling up into sort of deeper and deeper pull-ups, which is gonna kind of lock down your body position so that you have to kind of mitigate the swing with your lower body only. This can take a little bit of figuring, and if you try it too much in one session, it can actually get sort of confusing. So I'd recommend something like five to 10 total swings at the start of your session to get a feel for the motion. As your body swings back, you wanna pull your shoulders back, kind of squeezing between your shoulder blades, that cue of kind of a face pull, where your wrists are tracking back, your elbows are tracking back, and you're trying to kind of like pull your chest in and underneath the, the fingerboard so that the swing is transferred just down to your uh, sort of lower body and feet. Once you feel good on these big edges, the next step is to move down to either smaller edges or something that's a bit slopey, like the 30 degree slope on the Peacemaker, but really any hold that is sort of poor enough that you're not able to easily control a big swing on it. And that's gonna force you to do a similar type of motion, but with a little bit more subtlety. And because you're not able to hold as big of a swing, it's going to force you to do the movement in some sense more and more correctly. Once you get a sense of how your body should move, you can experiment with your pull position being deeper or more extended. Being able to execute this motion at each of these positions will just give you a much deeper understanding of the movement, as well as being able to apply it, to apply it more naturally to different situations on the wall. All right, now that we're done with the, the fingerboard component, we get to move over to this sick new beast maker wall. Every single thing on here is incredibly comfortable and ergonomic, and it's wonderful. <laughs> so the next one is going to be simply cutting your feet and then trying to place them back on. Uh, you're not gonna be moving your hands. We're trying to keep the, the whole drill as simple as possible. So it should feel pretty similar to fingerboard swings, but on a wall. So you want to pick holds in this case that are bad enough and not in cut enough that you're forced to kind of try to stay underneath them and in plumb line, but they should be good enough that you can control them reasonably well and feel out the motion. Additionally, the higher your feet are, generally the easier it's going to be to stop the swing before it really starts. And the more extended you are, the harder it's going to be. 
little swing and replace, little swing and replace, little swing and replace. The goal being to just continue feeling out this motion and feeling more and more natural with it. Yeah. It's kind of the nice thing is that you can miss the foot and it's still like all good. <laughs> get that cadence from sort of like open, close, open, close. And then once you get a little bit of a sense of that, try to play with kind of like getting up high, staying a little bit down low, and they're all gonna have like slightly different feels to them. Face pull, yeah. lever, face pull, lever. And you can actually like force it out. Remember that the point of this drill is not just to uh, experiment with the scorpion and controlling the swing, but also to rapidly and precisely replace your feet. Um, if you skip that step, it can potentially lead to some sloppy footwork, but also even if you control a swing beautifully, if you're not able to return your feet to the wall nicely, you're gonna be kind of stranded. <laughs> there are now two small modifications that you can make to this drill to make it a little bit of a better pairing for real rock climbing. Instead of taking cuts on the same exact holds, you're gonna kind of try to climb through these things, do a move, intentionally cut, resettle, do a move, intentionally cut, resettle. So that's gonna get you through more body positions and a little bit more, uh, a little more variety of movement as you kind of learn and ingrain this more. but I didn't stick yeah. it. Yeah, so that ends up being like a little bit in between. You get some of the cock, but you also pulled up a little too high and your legs are sort of too straight. Yeah. If your body's straight, you just have this sort of big ponderous like pendulum going on. <clears throat> and it can be slower, but it's hard to control. The more you kind of like set this and let the momentum go through your legs, ultimately it's the same amount of swing that you have to get rid of but you're just moving it out of the upper body, which is what's attached to the holds, down to the lower body, which is a little bit more negligible. <laughs> so if you can kind of keep this all quiet, you still get rid of that swing, but in a way that's not really disrupting your position on the wall. And so that's just the difference between sort of like pulling up and arcing, but just kind of swinging out like this, versus intentionally arcing to pull your hips in and kind of just like having it all curl into that kind of classic scorpion position. Nice, dude. That was still better, but you pulled up in, you curled, but kind of your butt and feet sort of went together. And so you kind of want to like really like extravagantly suck in. It's a strange combination of like tight and controlled and then almost like loosey goosey, like you just got like a tail going on, <laughs> like kind of flopping it around. Yeah, nice. That was actually pretty good. The final version of all of this is start doing a bunch of jump moves. <laughs> Ideally jump moves to relatively poor holds. If you use holds that are sort of too big and too in-cut, you can kind of escape having to do it well. Every part of that was trash. <laughs> Hopefully this has been useful and you guys get a chance to practice and uh, check it out on the Crimped app. Oh, hey, Jason. Until next time. Train, climb, send, and repeat. <laughs>